being at the right place in the right time usually has some part to play in the crafting of greatness. And being a Londoner during World War II was John Hegarty's bout of good fortune. Bombs were being dropped, sure, but no one could have predicted what it would lead to. Permissiveness, pirate radio, Carnaby Street, but to name a few gems. The swinging 60s was a direct result of a post-war Britain prospering once more. Baby boomers were looking for profound change to the cultural agenda. The first generation wanting to make their own mark and disrupt the status quo. And of course, we can't forget all that jazz. Those dark suits, white shirts and knitted ties look pretty good, eh, John? Not long after that, the Beatles came along, joined by screaming teenagers. Journalists compared the sounds made at Beatles concerts to the nerve-shredding cries of pigs being brought to slaughter, or to the screech that New York City subway trains make as they grind along the rails. They became a symbol of the decade. Four lads from Liverpool who embodied all the hope of a generation, taking on the establishment and winning. The world would never be the same again. And John knew that. Though many say it was the screaming that did it. Now, let's fast forward. Hegarty was starting his career out as an assistant art director at an ad agency, Benton and Bowles in Knightsbridge, a rather stuffy part of town. Overshadowing the place were clashing egos, conflicting opinions, motley personalities, diverse philosophies, not to mention natural antagonisms like account people versus creatives. Other than a handful of arrow-shirted American expats, the majority consisted of publicly educated account men trained to say yes, no matter the question. They were stuck in the 50s, exactly where Hegarty didn't want to be. He wanted this. Now, let's not mistake Hegarty's view on Benton and Bowles for arrogance. Sure, he was young, and Sir John had no problem honing his craft. He just wanted to do it the right way. And learning to crosshatch a 65 line screen letterpress and becoming an expert in woodblock display type, it just wasn't doing it for him. Hegarty quickly came to three conclusions. One, being in charge was the only way things could really change. Two, have self-belief in the path you choose, no matter how tough things get. Three, creativity is a way of life. Despite the working environment, there was still time for the occasional practical joke. All account men were nicknamed the chinless ones. Only they were permitted to make presentations to clients. There was this one occasion where Benton and Bowles were pitching a new client, a brewery called Courage. Terrified of being late, an account man flung open the doors and without looking, picked up the dummy bag they had placed waiting for him. Perfect. These Courage employees barely believed in advertising. They thought their beer didn't need it, that it sold itself. Nonetheless, the account men hopefully opened the presentation. The Courage team listened. Everyone in the room was expecting their favourite drink to be shrouded with masculine imagery. Both sides of the equation couldn't believe what came next. He pulled out an ad for a British underwear brand for larger women. As you can imagine, it wasn't received well. Drenched in sweat, staring down the barrel of dismissal, the chinless one and the yes-man grovel at the feet of the clients. That afternoon, Hegarty was summoned to the office of the man in charge. He was asked to leave immediately. It hadn't been long, either. He was told he wasn't going anywhere. We'll see, he said. <laughs> 